Yes, I know he was supposed to protect the speaker equally from his enemies and from us. By including us as escorts, you're taking an informed risk. What will keep them from escaping deep into enemy territory? That's the reasoning. If you've lived on an Imperial planet, you'd realize we're never going home. Betrayal and collaboration have always been an integral part of any war. Whether it be cowardice, initial sympathy for the enemy, pragmatism or simply lack of choice. There are always those who are ready to turn their weapons against former comrades and the people of the 41st millennium are no exception. The only difference is that by betraying the Imperium, a man betrays not the state, but his entire species. Of course, with the multitude of threats from outer space, betrayal would hardly seem reasonable to even the most downtrodden members of human civilization. After all, the very idea of switching to the side of the Orcs or Tyranids is ridiculous enough to confuse even the most insane adherents of chaos. However, among the enemies of humanity, there are those who do not consider themselves as such in their ideology, and their methods of warfare and work with prisoners are not capable of impressing only space marines. The Tau Empire is a young and by Imperium standards, small interstellar state located in the Ultima Segmentum. Unlike the green-skinned savages and the treacherous Eldar, the Tau are not obsessed with war for war's sake, and do not suffer from morbid arrogance and hatred of other inhabitants of space. Following the idea of the greater good, these Xenos do not seek to destroy all who do not belong to their species or do not share their ideas. However, they are quite capable of being brutal and pragmatic in their expansion. Orcs, for example, were long ago recognized as hopeless, and all attempts to assimilate them were stopped due to their utter futility. It was decided that the greater good would be better off without them. However, the green-skinned, while numerous and ubiquitous, are not the only intelligent species in the galaxy. Even before first contact with the Imperium, the Tau had successfully assimilated many races like the Crutes and Vespids into their culture, proving that the Tauva were capable of accepting even savages, as long as they were willing to accept its ideas. The rapid development and expansion of the Xenos caused an inevitable clash with the humans. The Damocles Gulf Crusade almost became the end of Tauva. Only the invasion of the Tyranids, which forced the Imperium to redeploy forces, saved the Xenos civilization from annihilation. However, along with the destruction, the Imperium brought new servants to Tauva. Humans that, for various reasons, were willing to turn their weapons against the Emperor's warriors. The rapid retreat of the Imperium army from Tau territory inevitably led to a huge number of prisoners of war. Many units were abandoned to their fate, and entire worlds in the Gulf of Damocles were left defenseless. In any other case, such a thing would have guaranteed the abandoned people a death sentence. However, the Tau proved to be far more pragmatic and merciful than other enemies of the Imperium. As it turned out, instead of torture, executions and hard labour, the captives were expected to go to a processing centres where people were told about the greater good and shown the conditions of life in the Tau Empire. Surprisingly, all the Xenos wanted was acceptance of Tauvar ideas and a willingness to labour for the greater good on an equal footing with the other races of the Empire. Every traitor always has his own reasons with which to explain his act. However, the effectiveness of the Tauva propaganda methods cannot be overemphasized. The life of an ordinary person in the Imperium can hardly be called easy. Endless work shifts in huge manufactories, dark corridors and the poisoned air of hives, and the realization of one's utter insignificance contrasts sharply with what the Tau promised the people. I went to see his widow a few days ago. She's living in a nice house now, well supported by the Sept authorities. Hinks's children will grow up into model citizens. The boy said he wants to be an auxiliarius of Gaveza like Uncle Yaton. He's a big boy, tall and strong. I keep wondering what life would be like for him on Gorman's mooring. He'd probably be half blind by now, toiling in the silk plantations, or dead. And here, look at him, nourished, well-groomed, strong as an ambulance calf. Just wonderful. The ethereal caste realizes that the best way to survive in the face of the Imperium's colossal war machine is to peacefully absorb Imperial worlds and forces wherever possible. To achieve this goal, the water caste has embarked on numerous diplomatic missions, 
with varying degrees of success, converting imperial citizens to the service of the greater good. Knowing that each diplomatic victory spares them from a potentially costly military campaign, the Ethereals and Watercast attempt to appeal to every level of Imperial society by emphasizing the many different aspects of the greater good. To emphasize the appeal of membership in the Tao Empire, they guarantee protection from Imperial retribution to rebellious planetary rulers. They also promise the Imperial nobility who control planetary trade lucrative new sources of income and new technologies in the Tao Empire where they will be free from compulsory tithing and the excessive bureaucracy of the Imperium. The Tao also promised that all people will be allowed to choose any religion as long as the practice of that faith does not conflict with the greater good. This freedom is unimaginable on Imperial worlds where strict adherence to the laws of the Imperial cult is always required. Perhaps the most significant aspect of the highest good for the common imperial citizen is the belief that all those who contribute to it hold a meaningful and valuable place in Tao society, instead of the relatively low value to the imperium of an individual's life. The Tao probably believes that everyone has a place and everyone matters. However, not all of those who find themselves under Xenos rule become traitors. Not all humans willingly accept the rules of the Tao. For example, many on the planet Cronus resented or directly resisted the Tao 200 standard years after the world was originally conquered. There has yet to be a known case of Tao violence against a human. But a prime example is when a man posing as an Imperial Commissar killed two earth caste workers in front of a crowd of people and then incited them to riot. People who have not joined the Tao Empire are not referred to as Gravesa. Instead, they are given the derogatory name Gurla, which translates to human. However, everything has a price. There are always inevitable consequences to siding with the enemy. The realization that you are now an enemy of humanity will forever linger in the mind of any traitor. And unlike those who have fallen victim to destructive forces, the Gravesa will never be forgotten in the saving madness. Every shot fired at his former fellow citizens and defenders would inevitably be a shot at his own psyche as well. I looked at the space marine that nearly killed me. It lay dead with its arms spread out. From the punctured propulsion system on his back, a whole puddle of coolant leaked out. Clots of plasma scorched the paint on his armor. In some places the armor still glowed a dark red, and where it had cooled, it had taken on a new color from the heat grey with a purplish cast. There was a gaping hole in the Raven Guard's side, the flesh and bone beneath the armour charred black. Curls of smoke billowed from the shattered eye lenses, thus died the champion of mankind. I did not rejoice in victory, I had been raised from the cradle on stories of the valour of men like him. Moreover, I felt uneasy, as if I had finally crossed a boundary beyond which there was no turning back. Of course, I had killed many people before, most of them for the greater good, and I was not responsible for this warrior's death. But now it was not a man who lay dead in front of me, but Space Marine. I had participated in the murder of a hero of my people. Furthermore, despite all the benefits, assimilation means losing the heritage of one's race. Traitors lose their language. The Tao do not speak Gothic, and the Guevesa are forced to learn the Tao's Xenolexicon, which they can only speak relatively fully after vocal cord surgery. They are deprived of their culture and religion, receiving in return an emasculated and devoid of essence parody. Generation after generation they will forget where they came from, denying the light of the Emperor. They have denied all of humanity, becoming just one part of the Xenos Empire. Perhaps the Tao did accept them as equals, perhaps the Xenos themselves believe what they tell the humans, but that doesn't make their betrayal any easier. Even so, there are those among the humans who have not only accepted the conditions of the new life, but who are sincerely carrying their heresy to others, such as Jikim Slovaz, formerly an Imperial Guardsman in the 19th Brimlock Dragoons. He was reported missing after his regiment remained in Tau space during the Damocles Gulf Crusade. The regiment surrendered when all of its commissioners were killed in action. Decades later, Slovaz would launch a Tau propaganda campaign, 
describing the just and humane treatment that human prisoners of war could expect if they surrendered to the Tao military. He would later be granted excommunicate traitorous status for heretical interaction with Xenos. Undoubtedly, they will live and perhaps in much more comfortable conditions than before. However, they are no longer human, they are Guevesa. They no longer have their culture, they no longer have their language, they no longer even have their old names. All they have left are alien ideals and the hatred of those they considered heroes. But what does it matter when betrayal is your only chance to survive and escape the hated corridors of the Hive? When retribution is far away and Xenos with pulse rifles are right here, and if they don't want to kill you despite the propaganda, why provoke them? In the name of the Emperor?